Good morning and welcome to Stapleford Salvation Army. Let us come into the presence of God as we listen to the call of worship and it will be read by one of our songsters, Rose Bosworth. It comes from Psalm 95 verses 1 to 7. The reading is taken from Psalm 95 verses 1 to 7. Come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands form the dry land. Come let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Verse 2 said, Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. So let us do just that with our first song, and it's joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee. As I was reading those words, I got that wonderful image of unfolding like flowers in worship to God. So let us now just join in and sing this powerful song together. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers be to the sun above Melt the clouds of sin and sadness Drive the dark of doubt away Giver of immortal gladness Fill us with the light of day All thy works with joy surround thee Earth and heaven reflect thy rays Stars and angels sing around thee Center of unbroken praise Field and forest, vale and mountain Flowery meadow, flashing sea Chanting bird and flowing fountain Call us to rejoice in thee Spring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Let us now commit our time and our meeting to God and Tegan and Alfie will offer prayers on our behalf. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe once again this week. And I pray that you continue to do so as we begin to meet up with friends and family. We also pray that you will guide us until we can meet again in your place of worship and learn more about you. Be with us through the coming weeks as times become more normal again. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this lovely weather we are having at this time. Please bless all who are sick and bless all my friends and family who I miss. Amen. Thank you, Tegan and Alfie. We are blessed this week to have our worship group to lead us in that beautiful song, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart.
We are now going to enter into a time of prayer and Kevin Wibberley, one of our soldiers, will lead us to the throne of grace. So let's just pause for a moment as we come to contemplate what it is we're about to do, as we come to seek God's presence, to listen for his voice, the voice of our infinite, almighty, powerful, merciful God. And as we continue to pray, although it's the custom maybe to close your eyes and bow your head, that's not essential. Maybe you want to look around and find some good beauty to look at, something that reminds you of this creator, this majestic God who created this universe in which we find ourselves. So Lord, we come and kneel before you. We acknowledge who you are and what we are. Perhaps we even dare to lift our eyes to seek your face. And as we do, only to find that you're already looking down at us with arms of love outstretched towards us to hold, to comfort, to bring your living presence towards us. So as we do that, we bring this fallen, broken, fragile world to you. We wait for you to return, to bring your healing, your restoration. We bring our community to you, this place where you've called us to serve and to be, to be your hands and feet. Seek in your name to try to bring equality, to address poverty, distress wherever it may be found. We bring those individuals who we carry in our hearts and minds to you. Probably too many to name, some personal to each one of us, but we bring them and we place them at your feet. We bring ourselves with all the difficulties, all the problems, but also all the joys and all the fun and all the laughter, all the brightness that fills our lives. And we say thank you that you've given us so much. In all these areas, we would pray for your guidance as you guard and lead us through these turbulent times. And if ever perhaps a phrase sums up our situation, we would come to you and say, Lord, equip us to serve this present age, this calling that you've called us to fulfil now, to those people that you've surrounded us with at this moment. So give us the courage and the wisdom to seek your will, to seek your will for the here and the now, to be prepared to do what you call us to do, even if that means giving up some things which are precious to us. As we seek to be your servant, just now, where you've placed us. So we come to you, the God who can do immeasurably more than anything that we could ever hope or dream of. And we seek your guidance, your spirit, for this time and the days to come. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. As you are sat watching the screen this morning, I don't know what you are going through or what you are experiencing, but I'm sure there are perhaps many of you who are struggling in one way or another, maybe financially, or you may have health concerns, or are you struggling emotionally? You may be feeling alone, but this morning there is someone who you can lean upon, who will take that burden from you. You don't have to carry it and struggle on your own. And that song says, leaning safe and secure from all alarms, leaning on the everlasting arms. Visualise yourself right now, leaning on the arms of Jesus, being held by him, feeling 
safe and secure. Because that is where he wants you right now to lean on him. So as we sing this song together, let God lift that burden from you. Lean on him and he will hold you and stop you from falling.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for anyone watching today who needs to lean on you. Please lift that heavy weight from them and let them feel secure in your arms. Reassure them that they are not on their own and you have them safe. All they have to do is to reach out to you. So come by your Holy Spirit and touch them, heal them right now. Take them into your arms and let them feel safe and secure. I ask this in your precious name. Amen. Let us now listen to the ministry of the International Staff Songs as they bless us with the song, Somebody Prayed For Me. Thank you. 
Our Bible reading today will be read by Major Marion Ship, and it's taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 1 to 20. This morning's reading is taken from Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with inner power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations for ever and ever. Amen. The theme of my message today is God in a Box. What a strange title for my message, you may think. However, in the Old Testament, as we discovered a few weeks ago, that is what the Israelites thought, that God was in the box. Let's read that first verse together. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 2. I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets which you shattered, and you shall put them in the ark. Hopefully you'll remember the problems the Ark of the Covenant caused to Uzzah a few weeks ago. Just to remind ourselves, here's a picture of what it looked like. The Ark of the Covenant was a sacred chest made by the ancient Israelites according to the command and design of God. It housed and protected the Ten Commandments written on two stone tablets. The Ark was associated with God's presence. For example, the cloud that appeared over the Ark in the Most Holy and at the Israelite encampments was a sign of Jehovah's presence and his blessing. In Leviticus and Numbers, the Bible says that Jehovah sat enthroned above the cherubs, referring to the two cherubs on the ark's cover. So you can see why the Israelites thought that God was in the box. It represented everything about him, his holiness and all the ways that he had spoken to them. The Ten Commandments and the miracles that had taken place was on their travels. Also, the way that it was reverent and kept in a special place, the Holy of Holies, it must have confirmed that God was in the box. But you know, so often we also put God in a box. We don't literally have a box and think that God is there, but we do actually put him in a box. We do this in various ways. I'm sure many of us have a time of devotion or quiet times during the day. A time which we set apart to pray, read our Bible, and most probably we have some form of devotional book. So often that is us putting God in the box. Because you see, that is the time when we give God our undivided attention, be it five minutes or 15, but that is his time. I'm not saying that he doesn't speak to us during the remainder of the day, but that chunk of the day is God's time. That is the time when we take God out of the box. And after our time of devotions, I wonder, do we put God back in the box until the next day and put the lid back on the box? Does our readings have an impact on us? Does God speak to us? Does our quiet time change anything? Do we do the same ritual or routine every day? Have we been using the same devotional book for a long time because it has become a routine? There's nothing wrong in that, but I believe that there is so much more of God but we keep him in our box and in our routine, so much so that we never really experience all that he has for us. It's like putting God in a straitjacket. 
Challenge yourself this week to put away your routine, your routine devotional book, and try a different way of praying. Try a different routine to start with. Start off with praising God. Read, read the Bible in a different way, or use a different version to what you are familiar with. Try using a commentary as you read. Look at different ways of reading the Bible. I'm sure some of you have heard of Lecto Divina, where you choose a short Bible passage and read it through several times and see what that phrase or verse starts to speak to your spirit. Take the lid off your box and see what God wants to reveal and say to you. Other ways that we can keep God in the box is the way we think and worship. It's so easy, particularly being in the Salvation Army, that we think there is only one way to do things, and that is the way in which we do it. It's so easy to say we are teachable and adaptable and we'll try anything, but are we really? There are so many expressions of the Salvation Army today, and many look nothing like we were brought up in. Many core don't wear uniform, and if they do, it's not what we would call proper uniform. Meetings don't have the same worship songs that we are familiar with. And it is so easy to think, well, where is God in those words? But again, by rejecting all that is different and trying to hang on to what is familiar can keep God in the box. We don't want to take the lid off because we like the way things are. But again, by doing this, we are not allowing God to work in our lives. It may be the way that people pray, the songs that they sing, the clothes that they wear, just because they are different doesn't make them wrong and us right. God speaks to each one of us differently. Even within our own fellowship, I'm sure there are people that perhaps want to be different, to express themselves in a new way, but perhaps they are afraid for fear of disapproval. How do we react when we see people being exuberant in their worship, hands in the air or kneeling down or prostrate on the floor? What would our reaction be? Perhaps because we have put God in our box, we don't appreciate that others have released him and themselves from the confines of what is expected or the norm. You may say, oh, that would never happen, but it does. I sometimes think that is why the mercy seat is not used, because people are bothered about what other people would say about them. We are gradually coming out of lockdown, but will we go back to the way things were? Or are we wanting to take God out of our box of doing the usual or the same and be open to see what he wants to do with our core, the changes that he wants to make? It will mean perhaps stepping out of our comfort zone and trying and doing things differently, but unless we are prepared to be open to God's leading, we will become stagnant. This is God-given opportunity to make a change. We can also put God in our box by our expectations of him. Do we believe in miracles or did they just happen when Jesus was on earth? Do we limit God by our experiences of hearing him? You know, he can speak to us in dreams, in visions, prophecies and through other people. But are we open enough to hear him? Or have we limited our ability to hear from him in unexpected ways? In our own limited human understanding, we often find ourselves putting God in a box and limiting him. But the word of God tells us that we serve a God who is unlimited in power, capacity, knowledge, compassion, grace and holiness. It's been said that trying to understand the fullness of God is like trying to put the whole Pacific Ocean into a glass of water. It can never happen and it will never be possible. You see, we will never truly understand God fully. How is it that he's three persons at once? How is it he's with, be at, with begin, about beginning and end? How could he have created the world in just a few days? You see, we try to understand God, but there just comes a point when we leave the books on the table, put our hands in the air and worship and say, Lord, how majestically unlimited you are. Yes, it is indeed hard to imagine and basically impossible to try to truly fathom God's whole being and person. Yes, we can trust that God is indeed limitless, both in power and in his love for us. When we really get a hold of that, we will realise how much we should never be afraid of anything in our lives. 
Here are scriptures that will help us to stop putting God in a box and remember just how mighty and great he is. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 But, as it is written, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9 For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This message is not meant to condemn, but to release each one of us, to inspire us to take the lid off the box and let God free us to look at things differently, to do things differently and to allow others to be free in the way that they also worship. This coming week, take the lid off your box where you keep God and see what happens. Expect him to speak to you. Expect the unexpected. You will find that by being open completely to God, he will bring people into your life, opportunities that you never saw before. You will see creation, nature in all its fullness. You will see God in other people. And I believe as you reach out to God and, and say, reveal yourself to me anew, you will see answers to prayers because no longer will you be limiting God. This week when you have your quiet time with God, Choose a different way of praying. Read a book of the Bible that perhaps you've never read before. Read a study book or a commentary. At the start of the day, be open and ask God to be with you, alongside you in everything you say and do. And really mean it. Don't put the lid back on the box. God has so much more for each of us, so much that we cannot even imagine. And he longs, yes, longs to bless you with good things. He longs to reveal himself to you. This week, today, be open for all that he has for you. The verse of scripture that Marion read out earlier says it all. How much God wants to bless us. Let's hear it again. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 17 to 20 from the Living Bible. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts, living within you as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvellous love. And may you be able to feel and understand, as all God's children should, how long, how wide, how deep and how high his love really is. And to experience this love for yourselves, though it is so great that you will never see the end of it or fully know or understand it. And so at last you will be filled up with God himself. Now glory be to God, who by his mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts or hopes. As we sing our next song, let it be a prayer from us all. Let the words speak from our spirit. Let each of us desire to go deeper with God.
the desire of our hearts this day. Lord, you are the desire of all the nations. And so, Father, we gather here from many nations and, and many people, and we join our hearts together to say, Lord, that in everything we do this day, in every time we spend, in every thought we think, Lord, and every meditation that we are involved with, Lord, may it all be an act of worship to your great and glorious name. Blessed be your name, O God. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, so often we keep you in a box, a box of our perceptions of you. We take you out when we need you and then we put you back again. Oh, Father God, help us to realise that you are so much bigger than we could ever imagine and that no box can contain who you are. Help us to raise our faith levels. Help us to reach out to you for greater things. Let us boldly bring our dreams, our hopes, our imaginations to you because we want to see you and experience you in all your fullness. So come, Lord Jesus, touch each and every one of us. Reveal who you are to each of us, how great you are, and how much more you have for us. If only, if only we would release you in our hearts and minds. Amen. My prayer for each and every one of you is that today you receive that loving touch from the Lord that will stir you, that will excite you and leave you wanting more of him. Let's sing our next song. I felt that new and loving touch and I pray that's my prayer for you this morning. <laughs>
benediction. May God shield you. May God fill you. May God keep you. May God watch over you. May God bring you this night to the nearness of his love. Amen. God bless you all.